All right, hello everyone um, and welcome. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about a new project that we started in March at WCEC. And that project is developing a high accuracy, low cost ventilation verification tool uh, for commissioning HVAC systems. Uh, this project is funded by the Office of Naval Research under the Naval Enterprise Partnership, teaming with universities for national excellence or Neptune program. To give you a little, sorry. There we go. Uh, to give you a little background on this project, uh, testing, adjusting, and uh, balancing is an iterative process whereby airflow within zones in a building are measured and documented to meet the design criteria for local building codes. Uh, tab tests are usually conducted by a certified contractor or inspector and follows a standardized method methodology uh, consisting uh, of independent agencies that are uh, specify requirements that each person must meet to become a TAB certified specialist. Uh, after completing the training program, uh, these individuals use their knowledge and experience uh, to uh, balance, uh, test, and um, adjust HVAC systems in buildings uh, during the commissioning process. Um, and this is a very important process uh, it, during construction, um, because it's where you can confirm that uh, the building is properly ventilated, um, airflow is going into the regions that you want, so the building can be conditioned properly. Um, and additionally, uh, with the ventilation, um, you're ensuring that indoor air pollutants, such as volatile organic compounds and carbon dioxide that is exhaled by the building occupants, uh, can be removed from the space, uh, making it a safe and productive workspace. Um, however, even with all of this, uh, these uh, current methods uh, don't truly measure uh, the outside air um, that comes into the building as ventilation air. So what we're doing with this project is uh, developing a tool that will hopefully help um, push this industry a little bit further um, and allow uh, or bring that functionality into it. To give you a little more background, um, the uh, this project uh, falls under the Neptune 2.0 program, um, and in this program, uh, ONR is pushing us to use uh, what is called the hacking for defense methodology. Um, and in that methodology, uh, you come up with a problem statement uh, to try and uh, address a specific issue that needs to get solved. Then you use uh, various techniques such as problem curation, beneficiary discovery, um, minimum viable product testing, and pivoting uh, to hack away the noise and uncover the true problem statement, um, as well as a solution for that problem. Um, for this project, we started this process uh, last year in May um, during an ONR hosted meeting, and we've gone through several iterations, but to give you an idea, this is the current problem statement that we're working from. And basically what it is is uh, NAVFAC Northwest, um, which is Naval Facilities, uh, needs a fast and accurate ventilation verification tool uh, to improve the uh, air quality at Naval Facilities. Um, NAVFAC has identified uh, HVAC systems um, as critical systems that are consistently experiencing performance issues. Um, and they've identified the tab process that I described uh, on the last slide as an in integral component to the in-house accepting testing in-house acceptance testing program um, designed to improve quality assurance. So to give you a few facts, I'd already mentioned this is a, a product under Neptune 2.0. Um, this is the first one that we're working on at the WCEC. Um, Neptune was a program that existed before this project, uh, but the, the main change with Neptune 2.0 is that it's now incorporating this the, the hacking for defense techniques, um, which also means that during the proposal process, you have to have a um, problem sponsor uh, to uh, fill, uh, to submit that proposal. Uh, so I want to quickly thank uh, ben Finkler, um, he was able to connect us to a contact uh, that he had at NAFAC Northwest, uh, Mr. Jai Jeffrey, um, who works in their building commissioning department, um, who has been pivotal in uh, helping us develop the proposal and now going forward uh, to develop this tool in such a manner that it helps uh, solve uh, various problems that he and his organization have uh, with retrofitting and building new buildings um, within the, the Naval Facilities Northwest uh, territories. Uh, we will uh, continue to use the hacking for defense methods uh, throughout this project. Um, what that 
primarily is meaning is that we will uh, always be refining our problem statement, um, coming up with uh, low cost, uh, low risk uh, testing methods, uh, such as um, intermediate uh, minimal viable products that we will uh, give to a, our problem sponsor, as well as other people of the industry to get you know, a, a direct feedback um, on the progress of our project and helping us to make sure that we're staying on course. Uh, throughout this project, uh, we plan to develop and test various uh, sensor packs um, and software prototypes to help address this overall problem. So to help frame this a little bit further, uh, I wanted to put together this simple example here. And what you see on the right side of the side, right side of the slide, um, is a simple diagram of a, a single zone office space. Um, I've given you a few details about it. Um, as well as a packaged air handler um, that is ventilating and conditioning that space. So when you're looking at this simplified model, uh, looking at the, the total airflow plus uh, the ventilation air is, is fairly simple. Um, you have one airflow path where the total airflow is coming into the space and you have one airflow path, uh, one second, this little. You have one airflow path where it's going into the space and then you have your outside air that comes into the unit um, and is mixing with return air to then return to the space. So the outside air, this is where your ventilation is coming from. And uh, for this floor area, um, for proper ventilation, you'd be expecting roughly 3000 or 300 CFM. Um, and what this equates to is roughly a air change per or one air change every 50-ish minutes. So basically, uh, all the air that's in the space can be replaced by outside air um, almost once per hour. So now that I've described this process, um, how would this actually be measured in practice, um, specifically by a TAB certified professional? So tools available, um, you know, this is a well-established industry, so there, there, uh, there are many, um, development efforts and tools out there to support it. Um, and two main categories that things can fall into um, are hot wire anemometers and pitot tubes. Um, for a hot wire anemometer, um, a small wire uh, in the device is heated to a temperature uh, that's assumed to be above what the airflow temperature is that you're trying to measure. And then based off of the amount of heat loss to that air, um, you're able to calculate what the velocity of the air is passing that wire. So it's a very accurate and robust device, um, but one challenge of it is that it means you have to have direct access to your airflow. Um, so if you're trying to measure the velocity in some place that you couldn't actually see, you wouldn't be able to use this device. Um, you need to be able to uh, put a small hole in the duct or put it in front of uh, one of these registers um, so that you can measure that actual velocity. Then the second option is a pitot tube. And uh, the pitot tube is measuring the difference in pressure between the dynamic uh, and static pressure within the duct. Um, this allows you to calculate the air velocity as well. Um, and this example here is what a pitot tube can look like. Um, the device can also be pre-installed in duct work. So in hard to reach areas or something like that, it could be installed uh, during construction and then used um, for commissioning and uh, ongoing measurements. So both of these tools that I've mentioned will only measure the velocity of the air. Um, and if you saw in the previous slides, I was more concerned about the volumetric flow of the air. Uh, so you're always gonna have to be able to convert from that velocity to that flow. Um, and sometimes it can be as simple as using the cross-sectional area, um, but in actuality, if you want an accurate measurement, uh, you need to use um, this log Chebyshev weighting uh, methodology. Um, which can get very complex uh, depending on your geometry um, and the tool that you're using. So what you're seeing here is two examples, um, one where you have a rectangular cross-sectional area, uh, the second where you have a circular cross-sectional area, and then based off of the number of points that you want to measure, uh, these are the distances uh, from the wall uh, that you need to measure to get either a five, six, or a seven point average. And then based off of uh, those measured values, uh, you take the average to get the, the bulk um, average velocity uh, moving through that duct, which you can then multiply by the cross-sectional area 
um, to get total flow. Other tools, uh, which are probably a little more user friendly, um, are flow hoods and potentially powered flow hoods. So a flow hood, um, like shown here, uh, uses those, those pitot tubes that I just described, um, but it has a space um, distributed array of them uh, within the base here. And what you do is you go up to the grill, um, you know, in any room uh, where the, the uh, air handler is pushing air into the room. And you cover that grill uh, with this hood. So all the air that's coming out of it should get pushed through this pitot tube array. Um, based off of that signal, it then gives you a volumetric flow rate. Um, so this is a pretty easy to use tool. Um, and the, the measurements um, are, are fairly easy to read out and are interact with. Um, the challenges are that one, uh, they're usually designed for a pretty small flow range, uh, so less than 2,500 CFM. Um, and if you're looking at our, our office building, we were getting close to that. Um, but it works in this case. Uh, and then the second thing is, uh, you know, it requires that you're able to actually get up to where the grill is. Um, so this can be challenging in places that have really high ceilings um, or, you know, ducts that are, uh, or sorry, grills that are placed in locations that you can't necessarily get a good seal. Um, another option is a powered flow hood. And a power flow hood is gonna be very similar to a flow hood. However, the addition, um, is adding a, a calibrated fan, uh, which uh, ones that we commonly use at the Western Cooling Efficiency Center um, are the same fans that we use uh, for duct blaster tests. Um, and it's a calibrated fan. So instead of using this pitot tube array um, down in the measurement, uh, this would be replaced by the, the calibrated fan. So you'd be pulling air, or air would you be getting pushed into this capture hood, and then you're pulling it out using that fan. Um, so you run that fan to keep a, a zero pressure differential um, which allows you to then calculate the volumetric flow rate. Uh, so with these methods, um, this is how uh, tab contractors are going around and um, measuring uh, air flows in the building to make sure that it's going where you want it to be. So to build on the example that we we're thinking of, um, let's look what happens when we now look at a, a two zone example. So again, we still have a single air handler, um, but now instead of one office zone, we're looking at two. So you still have the outside air coming in, it mixes with the return air that comes from one of the two zones, and then it goes back into that zone. So with the tools that I've showed you, you can definitely measure, you can go up to these registers with a flow hood um, or a hot wire anemometer uh, and get an idea of either the velocity or the volumetric flow that's coming out of it. Um, and the same thing when it comes to the outdoor air. Now, if you can um, uh, think about it, uh, you know, this, this is just a pictorial diagram, but it might be challenging to have enough space to actually put a whole flow hood uh, over this airflow path. Um, so you're usually probably left using like a hot wire anemometer um, to try and capture this flow. So you have that flow and you have these two flows, but what you don't have is how much of that outside air is actually going into each one of these spaces um, because you're just messing, me measuring the volume. So if you have good mixing and this outside air mixes completely with the return air before going back to the space, then you know you could assume that um, if you're getting the uh, 2000 CFM per room, that 300 of that is coming from the outside air uh, for each case. However, if it's not well mixed, you don't know if uh, one office is getting, you know, 75% of that flow, that ventilation flow, when the other one is only getting 25. So that's where our tool is going to come in. So the tool that we're building um, right now, we're looking to make it more of a screening tool uh, to go into an existing buildings and take measurements. Um, on systems that have been set up. And uh, it's gonna use the carbon dioxide decay method um, that has developed and is in literature. And what that does is you can go into a space um, and elevate the CO2 level. Um, and to give you an example, um, let's just say that during 
uh, normal occupied hours, uh, an office space can have a concentration of 800 parts per million, um, whereas the outside air only has 400. So depending on what the existing uh, outdoor air, sorry, uh, given what the indoor concentration is, um, our testing method, you might need to add some carbon dioxide to get to a level that we can measure this decay. So in this example, you can see we raised it up to uh, above uh, 1,750 parts per million. Um, and uh, so we raised the carbon dioxide level within the, the office, um, and then we run the ventilation system as is, and we measure the CO2 signal over time. And this ends up being an exponential decay. And when you fit it um, in a best fit scenario, uh, the time constant that you recover ends up being the air change rates per hour. So in the example that I was showing you earlier, you're getting an air change rate every roughly 50 minutes. Um, this one's getting closer to, to 45. So this, this example has more ventilation air than the other one. Um, but the important thing is that this example is actually directly measuring uh, the amount of outside air that's going into each space. Um, and why that's important, I'm just gonna jump back to this slide. Uh, is in the example that I was talking about, where if you don't have an equal split um, because you don't have equal or well-mixed outside air into that airflow stream, you would be able to look at these two um, offices, which expect to have the same air change rate per hour, and you'd be able to see that that is not the case. So uh, for this project, um, we uh, anticipate using uh, wirelessly communicating sensors. Um, the reason behind this is uh, so that uh, it, it can simplify the setup and uh, teardown process of each individual test. So it can hopefully save people time um, and money when it comes to doing these tests. Um, and additionally, uh, we're hoping that it will remove some of the requirement for subject matter expertise. Um, so instead of needing to understand how the uh, each grill um, within an office uh, is connected, um, you can just make sure that you know, you know where the, the general zones are located and uh, make sure that you're measuring within those zones. Um, you don't have to do a grill by grill comparison. So with that, um, I had said that you know we're only two months into this project, um, so we don't have any real results to show at this time. Uh, so I just wanted to give you guys an overview of what our timeline is expected to be. Uh, so in the first six months, um, we'll we'll work we're working with our project sponsor to build our prototypes, both for the hardware and the software side. Um, and when we start to get to the point that we have uh, an actual prototype that is to the to the level that it needs to be tested. Um, we'll first be testing within the WCEC offices. Um, once we have that, we will build upon it um, and begin working with the eco office on campus um, and start testing it in various buildings of different building types um, on the UC Davis campus. Uh, and then after the first year, um, this is when we take what we have and uh, uh, actually go to the NAVFAC Northwest facilities and run um, up to three tests on uh, actual facilities there, um, each time taking the feedback that we get from uh, NAVFAC to, you know, tweak the design, tweak the software, um, tweak how the data is presented, anything like that. Um, and then based off of everything that is currently going on, um, this uh, two-year project may end up becoming a little bit longer uh, based off of work that uh, will be delayed based off of the, the current uh, COVID-19 situation.